My name is Dmitry. I'm, I'm a Camel contributor since 2007. I'm currently working at Linaro. I'm uh, commentating one of the uh, drivers in the DRM subsystem. I am constantly reviewing uh, drivers inside the Qualcomm uh, ecosystem. And this, uh, the, one of the questions that constantly arrive both during uh, my work, during my spare time and during the reviews is how to get this vendor driver, that driver written by the hardware vendor or by some other company, how to get it into the kernel. So in, during the slides, I will use a small convention. So if it is minus, it is a bad practice. If, if it is plus, it is best current practice, as far as I know. And if it is written in uh, current U in the monotype uh, fold, it is a comment to run during your, during your work. So uh, upstreaming the vendor drivers, upstreaming the drivers at all, why do we care? Uh, we have an existing driver for our important device. So let's keep it out for ourselves. Let's keep it out of tree and never send it upstream. And if the user is interested, they can come and use it. Isn't it? Well, it's usually not good enough. Uh, it's not important enough, really. Nobody cares. So why should we send it at all? Uh, we can maintain it ourselves. We don't need any help. But more importantly, we can get excited. We can break some rules. We can change the API. We don't care about all the upstream conventions. So rules do not apply to us. So we can do whatever we want. Sounds good. But that's not the whole story. So keeping the driver, keeping the code outside of the mainline tree has a huge maintenance burden. Kernel developers are constantly changing the API. They're doing it. Breaking the user space API means, means breaking assumption of the existing software. And if you are not in the upstream, you cannot really follow the API and EBI of the platform. And also, last but not least, if the maintainers, uh, in particular, one very known maintainer doesn't see interest in this uh, pattern code, uh, this can easily get dropped. And now you do, you have no, not only to maintain your original driver, but also the whole platform out of tree. So it is quite frequent to see that when the vendor publishes some driver, it becomes abandoned there. It doesn't satisfy users. It is forgotten after being published. And this is why frequently we end up with the some old code from the vendor and our wish to upstream the driver, our wish to send it to the kernel. Uh, a side story or an, an, an additional view. What if you have a whole kernel tree like you frequently have in the Android use case? Can we just keep using it until the device is done? Well, frequently software dies uh, or gets out of scope uh, quicker than the hardware dies. So you are left uh, with the old uh, tree that, ha that is like several years ago, but still you want to use this phone this tablet, so this tele television, etc., and still all all the issues of the maintenance burden apply, but they are multiplied in uh, like several times because you are not, uh, not only have the driver, but you have the whole API, or oh, sorry, the whole kernel to keep and to update, to apply security fixes, etc. So this was actually the story that. Uh, brought me uh, to the Linux kernel because I wanted to make Linux kernel support some of the devices that I wanted to use on a daily basis. And this is what drives my day-to-day -day work. So let's get this uh, uh, driver and let's send it to the upstream kernel. Uh, initially, I thought that, uh, that it, it can be uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, Session can be a set of harmful advices from my side as a maintainer, but 
I felt like it is a bad way to go. So it will it will contain some harmful advices, but they will especially mark it as that. So attempt one, we have our fine a driver written for the important device by the famous vendor. It should be ready. It should be good to go. It has been tested. It has been used on a, a variety of devices. So let's send it as is. It should be accepted. It is good. Oh, not really. The kernel, main, the kernel maintenance and the whole kernel story is about maintaining or maintaining code written by others. So the main question is not uh, if the driver is good, but the main question uh, frequently asked by the kernel maintainer is, can we really maintain it? Does it follow Linux code style? And that, those are the questions that you should ask yourself before sending it. Uh, does the kernel, uh, does your driver follow Linux code style? Does it use spaghetti code as it's frequently seen uh, in a different uh, code? environments. Uh, does it use spaghetti code? Is it full of if devs and all the all the ifs, all the uh, hell of net of indentation, all nested loops and nested conditions? Does it has huge functions that nobody can understand? If it is the case, then you should rewrite it. Uh, follow the coding style, use the check patch, use the uh, use the tools that are provided to you and take a look around look what is what what is expected uh, next point uh, next question does it really compile well it surely compiles on your system in your case but what about different architectures different ndns uh, well uh, most probably you know about x86 and arm what about can it be compiled on MIPS? because distros or uh, some maintainers will try compiling it there and it shouldn't break. Does the code generate any warnings when compiled? Well, if it does, you should fix it. Does your code generate any warnings if you compile with additional warnings enabled? And if so, you should, you should fix those warnings too. So that's good. Well, still not enough. What about the driver itself? Will it behave? Will it crash if there is no hardware, for example? Or if there is no memory? Or if any of the resources get taken from under it? What if the user sends the wrong command or the wrong IOCTL? What if the firmware or the actual hardware sends the wrong data to you? Will it spam locks? Will it crash? Will it do anything else nasty? Well, if it does, you should fix that too. And think about somebody trying to break your, your piece of code or your hardware and fix, fix all those stuff, all, all those issues. Uh, okay. So you have prepared, you have written the code. You think that it is good. Can you send it? Still not yet. Uh, we should prepare the patches for the upstream. You should try to follow the upstream development process. I will spend some time on it a little bit later. But the current suggestion is to use the before tool written by one of the kernel developers because it significantly sim simplifies the life of the patch set. It significantly uh, simplifies the use of the uh, the setup of the system and it tracks what you have sent. It tells you that you are not ready to send a new version, or you should uh, write the change log. You should write some data about it, etc. Uh, and the first question that uh, even before to asks you before you start uh, the patch uh, the patch set. Ah, uh, what is the baseline? Where, where should you branch uh, your branch from? And we have seen several different responses to this question. We have seen this in the main, in actual patches being sent to the uh, for the review. Oh, we have been testing this with the last year, a long-term support kernel. Or yeah, this is a huge patch set that was based and that was tested on 5.15 kernel. Uh, oh, yeah. So this is all, these kernels are way too old. 
as I said, kernel API changes, and we know that there is no such thing as stable API in Linux kernel. So if you are looking for the place to start your or to use as a baseline, please use Linux next. Uh, or uh, in some cases, you can use Linux's tree, but there can be issues and maintainers can ask you to rebase later. And just use before uh, to start your branch. Uh, apply all your patches, commit them. And now think if the driver is complete. Did you document your public API? Did you uh, document uh, what you have added to the kernel? If it is a device tree based platform, which uh, most of the embedded devices are, did you document the device tree additions? Uh, there were several good talks by one of my colleagues, uh, Krzysztof, uh, that are dedicated to device tree handling, so I will not be spending more time on this. But before, if you are touching device tree or if you are using any of the device tree properties in your driver, you have to document them. You have to make sure that your schema uh, checks pass and that uh, the device tree files that you are generating do not generate new warnings. Uh, last but not least, you have written, you have compared, you, you have uh, committed everything, you have documented. Now, as it is usual, I said, well, take a step back. Take another look around. Uh, does, it, does your driver actually fit what is going on in the rest of the system? Take a look at the mailing lists. Read what's going on, because it well might be that you're trying to send the, the driver and the first response will be, oh, please wait, because we are going to rewrite this uh, part of the subsystem. Oh, yeah, so check similar drivers, check similar code, and be prepared to rewrite that part. Last but not least, think about splitting your patch set. During the last year, we have seen patch sets of uh, several hundreds of kilo lines of code being sent for the review. We have seen a series of 30 to 40 patches just also being sent for review. Just, oh, yeah, this is a good uh, driver for, uh, written by us. Please take a look. Consider how much effort does it take for the maintainer to actually read those 30 patches and those hundreds lines of code and to understand it. And especially the case uh, in, uh, oh yeah, by the way, we are adding the make file only in the last patch. And we are adding the patches uh, file just one by one. So this was one particularly, uh, but this was one particular case where we asked uh, Please change your. Uh, please change the way you structure your code. We have seen uh, different cases. So, oh yeah, by the way, this uh, this is the patch which is required to fix uh, changes from another patch. Please do not do such things. So after each commit, after each patch, your kernel should build. The kernel should completely work. It should be possible to review all the changes. It should not require significant amount of going through through those kilo lines of code just to understand your work. Uh, think uh, whether you can split your patch sets. Think whether you can submit the code in batches. Every time, think whether the change, whether the patch, whether the patch set itself is uh, uh, logical, whether it is atomic, whether it does not depend on anything uh, in, in, in a, that you want to send in the future and leave no gaps that should be fixed in the future. Yeah, so it is ready. Uh, a lot of people come from a different uh, ecosystem. So what about opening the web request? I see Linux tree on GitHub or on GitLab. Or maybe there is a Garrett. Can I send it in this way? Well, no. Neither you can send a zip, a zip with all the uh, patches. And believe me, this, this, this all, all this can sound funny, but I have seen a zip file with patches like, I think, a week ago, being sent for one of the trees. So 
the Linux kernel uses ML-based subsystem, ML-based sub, uh, submission system, no exceptions, no pull requests, no merge requests, uh, no GitHub, just email. And again, before tool is pretty helpful here to organize the patches and to organize the whole thread because it makes sure that uh, the uh, patch set gets a cover letter. It makes you write that cover letter. It makes you describe your changes. And it makes sure that everything is sent as a single batch. It well might be that uh, your corporate uh, firewall doesn't allow you to send uh, emails or if it does not uh, allow you to send emails other than through the Outlook or any other strange say, strange way. Now, before can do that for you too. It requires additional configuration, but it can be done. And so it uh, leverages a significant burden from the patch centers and patch, patch authors. So you are finally ready to write before send. You hit the enter and now what? Uh, it, during my first submissions, I was really eager to see any reaction and uh, oh, why don't everybody respond, respond in just an hour or in two hours? Uh, I was a kid at that time. So wait for the feedback. Uh, let maintainers, let reviewers, let everybody from the community take a look. So it, it can take days. In some obscure cases, it can take more than a day or more than two days uh, networking. Of, uh, networking subsystem has a rule that uh, all the patches should be responded within two days. Other subsystems do not have such rules, so it can take up to weeks. So you got some feedback, and now comes the hardware advice that I promised you. And they actually come from the experience on the mailing lists and from the patch autos. Oh, let's ignore maintainer's comments. Why should I bother? He doesn't know my hardware, he doesn't know my device. Let's skip some of the maintenance questions. I will answer most of them, but I do not or I cannot answer this one, so I will just silently skip it. Oh, I don't understand the question. Well, English is not my native language, and it is not a maintenance native language, so we just cannot communicate. I will ignore him. He will he has to accept my patch anyway. Uh, or even worse. Oh, yeah, I got the single line of comment. Let's send uh, the new patch to the new iteration immediately. I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, you are, but the main tours are not. Uh, the first rule of thumb is to discuss your changes. Uh, you have to, well, you don't have to agree, but you have to provide some uh, questions. You have to describe why you are doing it this way and you have to come to the conclusion before sending new iteration. So you have understood some of the points by maintainers. You got him, you, uh, you got it, you agreed with him. Uh, so you want to implement new changes, but before you are, you are doing that, well, most likely reviewers have responded with some tags and with some trailers. They wrote that, yeah, the patch was reviewed by, it was act, etc. And it is quite frequent, and I sometimes do that too, is to forget to pick up those changes. That was pretty hard to do before the before tool, but now it is as easy as saying before trailers minus you, and it will pick up all the, cha all, all the trailers, all the tags, all the information that maintainers have added to your patch set, and it will keep it forever. So yeah, do it, implement the changes, commit, uh, edit the cover letter, describe the change log, describe what you did. It is one of the frequent uh, points that we uh, see, oh, implemented uh, all, the, all the comments or fixed all the comments. No, that is not enough because when I start reviewing your patch, I want to understand what you, exact, what you exactly did. And thus you have to describe your changes in the cover letter. And as I said, please, before sending a new iteration, give everybody time to review, respond, acknowledge, disagree, etc. The rule of thumb that should be adhered in 99% of cases, and if you're unsure, just follow this rule, 
There should be no more than one iteration in 24 hours. Never, never, ever. For a big patch set, give it several days or give it a week. If you see that there is a, a dis discussion still ongoing, it is better to wait rather than to spam, uh, to spam everybody. Okay, so yeah, we, have, we are ready. The, uh, everybody has settled before send. Yeah, so what happens if it is actually a sad case where your patch set gets ignored? Oh, the first thing to do in such case, so you haven't got any responses in like a week, check if you have followed uh, the procedure. Are you trying to send the patch set during the notch window? Are you trying to send the patch set in a wrong time? Or did you actually add all the proper people and all the mailing lists that you should have uh, added? Did you get all the maintainers as a targets? Uh, beforehand, it, uh, everybody was writing uh, their own scripts or writing the two lists for such things. Uh, before can do that for you, but still, it is worth checking. But uh, usually, if for some reason you did not get a response in two weeks, it is fine either to reiterate the series or just to ask on the mailing list. Yeah, ping the main channel asking, yeah, what's going on? Just as a response to your email. Because it well might be that something is on vacation or is busy with the other stuff. So send the resend the series, ask, and be prepared to wait again. And sometimes this can take this can take a while. But hopefully and usually it gets picked and it gets reviewed and you get on the path. Uh, for the patch, for the first patch series especially, it can take some time to get everything done correctly. Please be attentive to your, be attentive to the comments. It is an iterative process, both for you and for the maintainer. You should be improving your patch set each time. So don't worry if it is version 10, it is not so frequent, but it happens. Sometimes we see version 20. It shows, it can send different signals, but it's not, oh, if, if, if nobody is telling you to stop at, at version 20, yeah, you can continue if you are improving your patch set. And in the end, if you don't stop, it will find the way into the kernel. The thing about vendor drivers and as we are focusing vendor drivers, be prepared to rewrite it. Be prepared for the complete rewrite or re even redesign of the driver because it is quite frequent that original authors of the driver have their own requirements. They had uh, different kernel versions, etc., and the kernel had improved in those years. So, it might take a while. Uh, don't think or don't uh, don't think that uh, it takes some. It takes too long. Please be motivated to do this work. It is both nice experience to you. It helps other people because uh, it expands the Linux kernel, the uh, variety of devices that Linux kernel supports, and it also significantly helps maintainers because we can better understand. Uh, what are the needs for the subsystems? What are the needs? What do you need? Or what are the drivers and what are the devices need from the core subsystems? Uh, last but not least, uh, especially in the commercial or development, we are frequently asked, oh, can you do this or can you upstream this driver by this deadline? And frequent and constant answer is we do not know. So be prepared to lose all the hopes, all the deadlines, all the estimates uh, when you submit the first iteration of the patch. Because there are sometimes you can estimate, oh, yeah, this is a simple change. This is a single uh, line uh, iteration. So it will be there in two months and three months. If it is more than that, it 
the process can take a while. So it will be a while when somebody else can actually download the kernel from the distribution or from Linux uh, and use it on his device out of the box. But it, uh, it, it all pays. It, it is all for the benefit of you, of the driver, of hardware support, and of, more importantly, of other users of the subsystem. And uh, the thing that I do not stop reiterating over and over, and which I keep on telling other people, especially when they're new to the Linux kernel development, uh, it is better to ask a question rather than to show the ignorance. Uh, it can take a while if the main, for the maintainers, for the uh, for other developers to answer your question. But it is much worse if you just ignore what is going on and uh, do the thing as you think uh, it should be done. Sometimes you might be right, but in this case, you are most likely you should you will not be most likely to listen to this presentation. So, if you don't get the question, if you do not agree with the maintainers, in eighty percent of the cases, you are not completely correct. A few links: uh, kernel documentation, Git manual, uh, important Git trees that you should know before sending the patches or before working on the patches. And that's all. Uh, thanks. Thank you for listening. Uh, this uh, presentation was driven by, or this lecture was driven by seeing uh, other people and other vendors try to upstream their code and by trying to pinpoint in a single you know, reference way all the possible mistakes that you can do and how to cope with them, how to not to do them and how to be cooperative. Uh, I would really like to hear uh, failure stories, success stories from you, what we as the kernel developers can improve and what was done incorrectly uh, from our side. And I hope to see your patches on the mailing list. I hope to review them especially if they are in the DRAM, so in the, in the DRAM, so in the uh, graphics or in the Qualcomm side. So thank you. That's, that's all. Great. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, I'm part of a just volunteer community kind of like working to build some drivers for pine 64 software uh have you noticed any kind of unique challenges that are faced by these kind of often not very professional developers who aren't you know they're doing it on their volunteer time uh when they try to upstream these drivers that they've written uh so yeah th this is an interesting question so we often see uh a significant part of the kernel contribution die by, done by the companies. I mean, the Daro, our company, Red Hat, other big vendors. Uh, but you will always see the uh, line unknown or uh, others in the LWN statistics. So last year, I actually made a case. Uh, I, uh, com I computed the uh, amount of changes done uh, for the DRM, DRM MSN driver, so the kernel display uh, for the Qualcomm uh, for the Qualcomm device uh, for the Qualcomm platforms driver, and I computed how many changes were done by the companies and how many changes were done by the uh, volunteers, and a third, one third of all the changes that actually landed to the kernel were done by the volunteers. So I would not call them, uh, uh, excuse me, sorry, but this is a pretty long answer. I would not call them unprofessional or amateurs or anything like that. Anything like that. In, in, in most of the cases, on a significant amount of cases, the patches from the volunteers are of a much better quality because they don't have uh, companies staying behind them and pressuring them. So they 
uh, the volunteers are tuned to learn. The volunteers are ready to that it will take some time and they work on improving their patches. Uh, for some obscure for all systems, it takes years and we still see patches going from like for the platform that is 10 years ago. So I have seen some of the patches sent for the Pine 64 uh, and I cannot say that they were done in some unprofessional way. So just please keep going. Uh, please work with the corresponding maintainers, with the developers that uh, are in charge of the subsystems and you can do it. Thanks. If you have any particular question about any particular case, yeah, feel free to ask, but in general, there is nothing wrong and nothing bad. bad sense. Volunteers are the, well, they are not the core because most of the core developers end up being paid. But volunteers is our driving force because in the end, we are, everything that we are doing is done for the users, not for the, not for our own sake. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Any more questions? I think that's it, Dimitri. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to use uh, the email to ping me in the spare time. Uh, if you need professional services from Linaro, please feel free to ping our contacts and we can do that for you. Yeah, so thank you for listening and have a nice rest of the day. Have a nice conference.